the IRS or the capacity to hear the truth. And when there are problems with the IRS, it usually means that on some level we do, or we're not happy about what we're hearing. You know, earaches are very, very common in little children. Little kids have earaches all the time. And I think it comes from two things. One, they hear a lot of stuff that they get angry about, and they can't do anything about because little kids are often not allowed to be angry. And also they hear no so much, and they want to shut it off. And so they get earaches, any sore, any cut, any burn, any inflammation, any fever, any itis of any sort, any bruise is anger, any cut. All these things are anger that's turned against the self. Hair, metaphysically, is strength. Now, it's interesting when you think about how hair grows. The hair grows through the hair follicle. And very often, when we get tight and tense and nervous, we have it started back here in the shoulders. We bring it up through the neck and over the top of the scalp. And very often, we bring it down around the eyes, too. But when the scalp is really tight and the hair can't breathe, then it falls over and dies. And if we keep that scalp really tight with tension, the new hairs can't grow through, and we get what we call baldness. Now, just for a moment, I would like everybody in the room to relax their scalp. Okay, did your scalp move? You don't have to tell me, just know yourself. That means that you normally keep your scalp in a state of tension. And it might be a wonderful exercise for you about 10 times a day to just say, scalp, you can relax, just let go. And begin to make a habit of relaxing your scalp. Tightening your scalp does not do anything in the world, doesn't make you brighter or stronger, won't get the girl or the guy. It doesn't lose anything. It just, it, all it does is make tension for you. So let your scalp relax. The eyes have the capacity to see. And when there are problems with the eyes, it means that there's something we're not willing to see, or we're afraid to see, or we don't know how to see. It can be past or present or future. It can be part of our life or all of our life, or we can see life through two different ways. If you have astigmatism, it's like we see life in two different directions. I do not believe that the reason people begin to wear glasses is that they're getting older in middle age. I think that what happens is many people spend a lifetime of saying, I don't want to see that. I don't want to look at that. Don't show me that. I don't, don't let me see there. And remember the eyes. The cells in the body began to listen to what we're saying. They hear everything, and they began to turn the sight off. When I see a little child wearing glasses, I know they always know there's stuff going on in that family. They don't want to look at the mouth is the capacity to break down ideas for analysis and decisions and discrimination and taste like you would food. Teeth problems are almost always long-standing indecision. The throat is the avenue of expression. This is where we express ourselves. This is where we say, I am, and I want, and I have, and I will. This is where our creativity flows. And it's also the area of the chakra center in our body where change takes place. When we feel we don't have a right to speak up for ourselves, we often have throat problems and laryngitis sore throats, or just anger and laryngitis is literally being so mad that you cannot speak. Thyroid has to do with creativity, thyroid problems, and you, it's not expressing ourselves. People who have thyroid problems usually do what their mothers want or their fathers wanted, or their husbands, or their lovers, or their wives, or the bosses, somebody else but not themselves. And you could say, well, you know, there's a lot of things with thyroid and thyroid here in the Midwest. But then where are people more bound by what the neighbors think and the shoulds of life? All right, shoulders have to do with burden-bearing, carrying the world of the weight of the world on your shoulders, taking other people's problems and carrying them and not being free to shoulder your own responsibilities. However, 
We can make light of them. They don't have to be heavy burdens. The experiences we have in life do not have to be heavy burdens. They can be experiences. There are certain things in life that are normal and natural to life, and it's part of our experience being born, growing up, having relationships, ending relationships, getting jobs, ending jobs, getting married, having babies, people dying, dying ourselves. These are normal and natural parts of life, and they're experiences that we're all meant to go through so that we have that experience. Arms and hands hold and embrace ideas and events and situations and experiences. And when we have problems with the arms, it usually means that there's some experience that we're going through that is difficult to embrace, or perhaps it's too much. The lower part of the arm has to do with the or your abilities, and the upper part, your capacity. Now, I've noticed something that when people nurse someone who has been ill for a long time, they often have upper arm problems. It's like they have the ability to do it, but their capacity gets stretched, and it becomes too much, and it's almost a burden. Hands hold and grasp, and they hold lightly and lovingly, or they clutch. And when there are problems with the hands, it usually means that there's something that you're experiencing and going through that is too difficult to handle. There's a problem with it. Fingers have to do with details. Our back. The back is the support of life. This is where we're supported by life, where we feel supported by life. And when there are problems with the back, it usually means that on some level, we feel that we're not supported. The upper back has to do with the feeling of the lack of emotional support. It's like my, my husband doesn't support me, or my wife doesn't support me, my lover doesn't support me, my friends don't support me, my boss feeling unsupported. The middle back has to do with guilt, all that stuff back there. And the lower back usually has to do with finances. And where do we have so much problems with the lower back? Sciatic nerve is almost always money, fear of money, not money itself, but the fear of it. And it has absolutely nothing to do with how much you have. It's how you feel about it. You know, so many people think that money is the most important thing in the world, and if they don't have money, they would just die. But that's not true. There is a substance that is far, far more precious and far more important to us that we literally can't live without. What is that? Love no parent. Plenty of people are miserable and lonely most of their life and, and then live air, your air, your breath. Your breath is the most important thing that you have the most precious thing. He didn't take another breath, you wouldn't last three minutes, and you'd never get out of this room. And yet we absolutely take for granted that our next breath is there. Look at us. We're all in this room breathing. And I'm not saying don't breathe. There's not enough for me. We assume that it's there. And when we exhale, we don't think about where's my next breath coming from. Now, if the power that created us has given us enough breath to last for as long as we shall live, can we not begin to trust that the other things will take care of themselves? See, life is here for us. Life is here to support us, to take care of us, to be here for us. The entire planet has been put here for us to play with. We have everything that we shall ever need. It's already here, only we have to know it, and we have to trust it, and we have to acknowledge it. Do you realize that there is more food on this planet than people could possibly eat? There's an incredible amount of food. Yes, it is true that there are people starving. The food is here. There is more money on this planet than we know how to count. The money is here. Now, there are lots of people who are very broke, but the money is here. There are billions of people on this planet. And yet you will have people tell you that they're lonely. Has nothing to do with not being people. It's what we're doing with our heads. Everything is here for us. For every disease on this planet, there is a plant that will cure it everything. Everything is here for us. 
And the more we begin to trust life and acknowledge the beauty and magnificence of our own being, the more we find everything we need, it just pops up. Okay, lungs have to do with taking in life. This is the breath of life. This is where we take in life, and we have the ability to take in just enough to get us by. Or we can fill our lungs and really have all the cells in the body work well in our brain cells work well. Traditionally, for generations and generations, women had been very shallow breathers because we bought this story that said, we're not good enough that we're second-class citizens. And we began to believe that we didn't have the right to take up very much space. And we barely had the right to exist. And so we take in just enough air to keep us going. That's changing now. And it's wonderful. And one of the things that really excites me today is what's happening with women in the gyms. You know, we have worked in the fields for a very long time, but I think this is the first time that I'm aware of where women have really gone out for sports. And you see some of the female bodies in the gyms these days that go out and exercise. They are incredibly magnificent and just wonderful. And they are taking in life and taking up space and taking air. And I think it's beautiful. So people who have lung problems, people who smoke too much, people have emphysema and things like that, they're cutting life off. They're saying on some level, I don't deserve to exist around me, deserve to exist a little bit. Breasts have to do with mothering and nourishment. And when there are problems with the breasts, that's either a mothering problem or a nourishing problem. It's very similar. We can overmother people or situations or places, and then we get into trouble. However, every woman that I've come in contact with that has breast cancer does not nourish herself. It's like you give and give and give and give, and they're not taking nourishment for themselves. And of course, there is resentment about it. See, resentment is a pattern that eats away at the body and becomes cancer. Resentment and anger are very different. Anger is more, and you scream and yell like a baby. Babies get angry instantly, and they yell and streak, and then they're through. And two minutes later, their smiles will just light up a room because they've gotten it out. What we do is we take offense at somebody for having done something that we created to begin with because we're all 100% responsible and we don't do anything about it and we put it down in here and we start to let it see and it boils and it eats away at us. And if we have it long enough, we can create cancer. See, diseases like arthritis are created from things or patterns of criticism. Arthritic people are always very, very critical people. Now, they may be sweet on the outside, but that means that the criticism is turned inward and they're doing a constant negative put-down number on themselves. Fear can come out as anything from baldness to ulcers to poor feet and lots of things in between. Guilt always seeks punishment, and punishment creates pain. So if I see somebody who has pain, I know they're dealing with guilt. And if it is chronic pain, then I realize that the pattern may be so old that they're not even aware of what it is. However, I do know it has a lot to do with I'm not good enough. So we want to nourish ourselves. The heart represents love, the heart represents love, and the blood in the body. Metaphysically is joy. So if you get this image of the heart lovingly pumping joy throughout the body, through all the veins and arteries, and nourishing every single cell in the body that is the normal natural state of the body, when we cut off our joy, when we deny ourselves love, then we are stopping our hearts from doing their word the proper work, say, heart attack. People are never joyous people. Besides, the heart does not attack us. What we do is we spend years squeezing the joy out of the heart until it falls over and gets sick. Now, anemic people are what I call yes, 
but people you know, you they come to you with the problem. You say, well, you could do such and such. Oh, yes. But are you say, let's go to the movies? And they go, oh, yes. But it's like they're just pulling that rug out from under themselves all the time, and they get what we call tired blood. The blood doesn't have the joy flowing through it. Now, high blood pressure is like emotional sprees. Everything becomes a big deal. Everything is a huge deal. And again, it may be not on the surface. It may only be inside. And low blood pressure is just the opposite. Low blood pressure and hypoglycemia are very similar. It's like, what's the use? New won't work. Why try? No bother. Again, you know, it's just there's this no get up and go. All right, kidneys have to do with disappointment and failure and fear. And you know the word kid, kidney has the word kid in it. And if you think of a little child, they can drop their lollipop, and it is the tragedy of the world. The whole world has ended for them at that moment. People who have kidney problems have a tendency to react to life in the same way. They make huge deals out of experiences. And if you speak to anybody who's on a dialysis machine, you will find out that about two months before that happened, they experienced what they considered a big loss in their life, either a relationship or a house or a job or something like that. And it's like they just, they, they can't, they feel they can't go on. They just can't go on. They don't know how to filter that experience through them. The liver is the laboratory of the body. It does have over 500 different functions, and it is also the seed of primitive emotions. So when we are very angry, that's like rage and anger and hatred sit in the liver. And when they do, then they create a lot of problems. If you're a very angry person, you can throw your liver off. If your liver is off, you can become a very angry person. For instance, Everybody in AAA is an angry person. You've got two givens with anybody in AAA, a lot of self-hatred and a lot of anger. And both of those need to be dissolved before the, the real healing can take place. Ah, stomach. Stomach digests ideas we've taken in its intake, assimilation and elimination. So the stomach is there to assimilate ideas. And very often when new experiences happen, we have problems assimilating them. It's something outside bells go. So it will assimilate this experience. And they have a right to make some noise. You know, when if a noise happens and it disturbs you, if you give it permission to be there, it's amazing what happens. Like we give that permission to make that noise. And then it sort of goes away from our consciousness. People get very frightened about experiences, and they find it difficult to digest them. You see, ulcers, remember, are nothing more than, I'm not good enough. It's fear. That's all it is, only it's a fear of with the boss. It's another way of saying, I'm not good enough, you know, thinking just for a moment of how the stomach works on a mass scale. Remember. Our bodies follow our thoughts. And you can look at a lot of people and know what their thoughts are. Just by looking at their bodies, do you know that the interior drama is always the important one? The story of your life is written by you. By each viewer of this video, you are the author. There is no reason, therefore, for you to view the drama and feel trapped by it. The power to change your own condition is your own. You have only to exercise it. You don't want to waste your current thoughts recreating your future from the past negativity. Blaming others means you're giving away your power, making someone else responsible for your feelings. Even though people in our lives can trigger uncomfortable reactions, they didn't install the buttons in your mind. Taking responsibility for your feelings and reactions means mastering your ability to choose consciously rather than reacting. Now let's dive into forgiveness. It's not the same as acceptance. Forgiving doesn't mean condoning someone's actions. It's an act that takes place in your mind, freeing you from the pain. 
True forgiveness is about releasing yourself from the negative energy, and it doesn't mean allowing hurtful behaviors to continue. Setting healthy boundaries is often the most loving thing to do for yourself and others. You can always move beyond bitterness and unforgiveness. Choose thoughts that make you feel good now and create positive habits that will serve you well forever. And now, let's explore prosperity. Focusing on lack only creates more lack. Resenting others' wealth puts up a barrier between you and abundance. Open your mind to new ideas about money and prosperity will come. Never believe there's never enough money or that money goes out faster than it comes in. These thoughts create financial difficulties. Winning the lottery won't solve your problems. If you don't change your consciousness, you deserve abundance by changing your thinking and allowing the universe his riches to flow through your life by affirming, declaring, deserving, and allowing. You can demonstrate wealth far beyond what a lottery could ever bring. So, choose your thoughts wisely. Embrace forgiveness and open the door to abundance. By shifting your consciousness, you have the power to create a joyous, fulfilling life. It's all within your reach because you have the freedom to choose. Also, honesty or the lack of it can impact your prosperity. Dishonesty can be a significant barrier to your abundance. The universal law of cause and effect states that what you give out in life comes back to you. If you take from life, life will take from you. This goes beyond just physical theft. It encompasses stealing time, robbing others of respect, or taking relationships for granted. All of these actions signal to the universe that you don't deserve the good in life. And that's a belief that needs changing. Take a moment to consider your beliefs around money and recognize any that might be blocking its flow into your life. Change those beliefs and embrace new, abundant thinking. Even if no one in your family has practiced this, you can open your mind to the concept of money flowing into your life. Prosperity thinking can be your path to abundance. In my journey, I found two prosperity affirmations that have worked wonders for me. My income is constantly increasing, and I prosper wherever I turn. Consistent practice made these affirmations a reality even when I had very little money to start with. I've always believed that business is a place to bless and prosper each other, not a cutthroat race to the top. At Hay House, our publishing firm, we've maintained honesty, honor, and respect for others, leading to a fabulous reputation and a flow of abundance. So remember that being honest and trusting in prosperity, thinking can open the door to a world of abundance. It's within your reach if you change your beliefs and create a life of joyful giving and receiving. Now let's explore creativity. You have a wealth of creativity within you waiting to be expressed. Don't limit yourself with negative thoughts. You can access the creative flow of the universe. Be mindful of any false assumptions that may have stifled your creativity in the past. Creativity is not just about being an artist. It's in your everyday actions and expressions. Every moment of your life is a creative endeavor. From your job to your relationships and even your self-esteem, so let your unique talents and abilities shine. Understand that divine guidance is always with you. Trust in the divine discontent that calls you to express yourself creatively. Remember. Spirit makes no mistakes, and when you follow your desires, you'll be guided toward fulfillment. Embrace the creativity within, whether it's in making your bed, cooking, working, gardening, or showing kindness. Find satisfaction and fulfillment in your creative expressions and trust in your divine calling. Let's discuss relationships, particularly in the context of love. 
Many of us prioritize personal relationships, especially romantic ones, as they often bring joy and fulfillment to our lives. But sometimes the pursuit of love can become a frantic search, leading us down the wrong path. When we search for love out of neediness, it usually results in finding the wrong partner. Neediness indicates a lack of self-love and approval. It's a sign that you are missing love and acceptance from the most crucial person in your life. You, you might end up in codependent and unfulfilling relationships when you're needy for love. However, the truth is, you can't create love in your life by focusing on feelings of loneliness or neediness. These feelings tend to push people away. What you focus on matters. Instead of dwelling on the problems or the reasons why your relationships aren't working, shift your attention towards solutions. Turn your thoughts away from the issues and embrace new thoughts that can lead to answers. Begin by fostering a loving relationship with yourself. Your first and most important connection is the one you have with yourself. A happy and content person is naturally attractive to others. Therefore, to find more love in your life, you must start by loving yourself. This self-love means no criticism, complaining, blaming, whining, or wallowing in loneliness. It's about being content with yourself and thinking thoughts that make you feel good in the present moment. People experience and express love in different ways. Some need physical affection, others need verbal affirmation, and some require visual symbols of love. It's essential to understand your unique way of experiencing love. So focus on loving yourself and demonstrate it through self-care and self-kindness. Pamper yourself and treat yourself with affection and romance. Cultivate a loving mental atmosphere within you and around you, and your thoughts of love and fulfillment will manifest in your life when you truly love and accept yourself. Your neediness diminishes, and you become more secure in your relationships, both at home and at work. Self-love is the foundation for building healthy and loving connections with others. Remember that the universe loves and supports you in your quest for love and wants you to succeed in all your endeavors. Start by nurturing love within yourself, and it will naturally extend to your relationships with others. A job success is a topic that many people struggle with. But here's the key to enjoying your work and finding success. Change your perspective on it. If you loathe your job or can't stand your boss, you're setting yourself up for a miserable work life. Instead, consider this. Your current job is just a stepping stone to greater opportunities. You're where you are because of your past beliefs and thoughts. You've attracted this job through your thinking. So bless your job and workplace with love from your boss and co-workers to the office building itself. Cultivate a loving mental atmosphere, and you'll see a positive change in the workplace. I've never understood why some people put down or belittle others at work. Whether you're a boss, manager, or supervisor, creating a fearful or resentful environment won't lead to the best results. Everyone craves appreciation, acknowledgement, and encouragement. By supporting and respecting your employees, you'll get their best work in return. Now, the belief that it's hard to find a job may be true for some, but it doesn't have to be your truth. You only need one job, and your mindset will pave the way for you. When you hear about negative trends in the job market or the economy, affirm that it might be true for some, but not for you. Declare that you always prosper regardless of external circumstances. This shift in your thinking will help you open the door to a successful and fulfilling job. I want to remind you of the incredible power that lies within your thoughts and beliefs. Your thoughts can shape your reality and your life experiences. Remember to treat yourself with love and kindness as you deserve all the good things life has to offer. 
You can transform your life by letting go of negative beliefs, practicing affirmations, and embracing self-love. You have the ability to create a life filled with love, prosperity, and happiness. Embrace change, welcome new opportunities, and know that you are worthy of all the blessings the universe has to offer.